Praise the Lord, everybody. If you'd stand with me, we're going to open up this service and invite the Lord into this place. But before we do, some of you might have driven through some wet stuff that fell from the sky. I know you might have forgot what that was, but they call it rain. And so I was, yeah, I was excited and I was thankful this morning. I was at 6 o'clock, I was standing outside just like, breathing in you know how the rain just kind of changes the smell of the air and the freshness of the atmosphere and I was just like oh man I was out there and I was thinking about that and the Lord kind of sparked this scripture and I want to read this to, actually I have two scriptures here Deuteronomy 32 and 1 says this and sorry Susie I didn't give these to you give ear O ye heavens and I will speak O hear O earth the words of my mouth my doctrine shall drop as the rain my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass, because I will publish the name of the Lord. Ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. You might have, you might have heard this before, as several of us I know have, but the truth is, whenever you have something invested in the ground, rain makes a big difference to you. But for those that don't have seed, those that don't have seed planted, they don't care. Rain becomes a nuisance. It's like this wet stuff falling on me. I don't like it. But for those that have invested, those that have planted, they're, they're waiting on the rain to come. They're depending on the rain to show up. And I don't know where you are this morning, what it is that you've, you've been planting, whatever seeds you have planted, uh, perhaps even this week. The Lord knows, and we are depending on His Spirit, the, the latter rain, to show up in this service here this morning. The Holy Ghost is a, an analogy of a rain is given and ascribed to the Spirit of God in Scripture. And we want the Spirit of the Lord to have its way. Before we pray, I want to read one more verse of Scripture for you. It's Isaiah 55 and 8. It says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down, and the snow from heaven, and returns not, but waters the earth, and makes it bring forth into bud and to bloom, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth, and it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. For ye shall go out with joy and be led with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorns shall come up the fir tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name and for an everlasting sign, and shall not be cut off. This morning, if you came into this place with thorns and briars, the Lord wants you to know that His Spirit, the rain, is here, and the rain is here to do something. The Spirit of the Lord is here to change your briar into the myrtle tree. It's here to change the thorn into the fir tree. You can produce something out of your life whenever the Spirit of the Lord comes in and ministers to you. So this morning, I want us to invite the Lord into our service. It's most important that the Lord be here than anything else. Amen? Can I get an amen? It's more important than the Lord is here. And I'm glad that you're here this morning. This is a wonderful place where the Lord comes in and ministers to us on a regular basis. But we want the Lord to have his way here today. How many here would agree that we're just simply here to give God an opportunity? I'm going to, I'm, and you need to commit yourself to that. That Lord, whatever it is you have for me here this morning, I'm going to give you a chance to speak to my heart, to speak to my mind. And let's do that. Let's agree together. Can you lift your voice and let's invite the Lord in this place. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would have your way here this morning. Lord, we know that, Lord, you are, you are a good God and you are a good father that gives good gifts to your children. We thank you, Lord, for the rain the rain on the outside of this building, the rain that has fallen upon our county and upon the fields of all these farmers. But Lord, we're asking that your rain would fall. The Spirit of the Lord, like it unto rain, would fall in this house. It would come in and Lord, it would minister to every heart and every mind in this room. 
I pray, Lord, for every individual, Lord, as we surrender to your lordship and your authority and what it is that you want to do here this morning. We ask, God, that you would have your way and that the name of Jesus would be glorified among, amongst us. And, Lord, that the name of Jesus would be glorified and lifted up in this house because, Lord, we've come here for only one reason, and that is to worship and to magnify you because you alone are worthy of all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. And we agree together in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship the Lord for a few minutes. You may be seated. Friends, there will never be a friend as dear to me as you. There will never be another. Lord, you're closer than a brother. A friend, always worth the wait. As faithful as you say that we are friends. Sing friends. Friend, there will never be a friend as dear to me as you. There will never be another. Lord, you're closer than my brother. Friend, always worth the wait. You know all about me, the good and the bad. You know when I rise and when I fall. You see the beginning, you stand at the end. And yet you remain faithful to say. You know all about me, the good and the bad. Oh, you know when I rise and when I fall. You see the beginning, Lord, you stand at the end. And yet you remain faithful to say.
glad that you're a friend of God. You get to choose your friends, and he gets to choose his friends, and he chose you as a friend. You may be seated. 
Welcome to church this morning. So glad to see you here at TPC. So thankful for the rain. Jonathan had a, an answer to prayer on Tuesday night. He requested that we pray for rain, and here it is raining. So we also maybe can thank Jonathan for the rain. <laughs> um, if, um, Mike and Gabe, could you help us out with the offering this morning? We're going to go ahead and take our offering. Um, Mike Morgan, could you help us? <laughs> Calling you out, Mike. It just makes sense. You're the treasurer. You should, like, take up the money, right? Our offering this morning is going for North American missions. Um, if you watch the news, you know that a lot of times there's all kinds of yucky stuff going on. But there's all kinds of good things going on, too, in North America. And we have people who are answering the call and going to places where there are no churches in North America. And they are planting and they are tilling up the ground. They're doing hard work. And so we want to support them with our prayers but they also need financial support. So that's what our offering this morning is gonna go for. If you would help me pray for all of our North American missionaries. Lord, you see each and every family that has answered the call to go into a place where there is no church, Lord, and to do the hard work of cultivating the ground that is in those communities. Lord, we know that it is your will to have a spirit-filled church, Lord, all across, not just North America, but across the world. And Lord, we pray that you would send the finances, that you would send the human resources that all of these people need who are doing this work and we pray lord that you would bless this offering in jesus name a few announcements for us this morning um who came to thursday night tea nights who came to tea nights this week yeah i think we had a really great turnout it was a really great time so thank you for participating in that we're just going to continue that through the month of june and possibly july um, but just a couple reminders about that um, you heard me say many times last week that there is no one in charge of this event. So there's still no one in charge of this event. Nothing has changed. That is still true. What that means is that if you have small children that you are bringing, you must accompany those children. Um, and everybody did. I'm not saying that somebody did, didn't follow the rules that we didn't say. But um, just remember that if you're bringing your kids, please stay with them. If for some reason you can't stay with them, make sure there is someone who is designated to watch them and be there with them. Because no one's in charge and no one might be here the entire time. So you don't want to just have all the adults up and leave, but then your kids are still hanging out at the parking lot. So just make sure somebody's in charge of your kiddos. And then if you could, if you're here, just kind of keep an eye. We don't want our parking lot to get trashed and we certainly don't want any kind of trash blowing over into the neighborhood across the street or anything. So I know we're all eating snacks and doing kinds of things, but there's a giant dumpster out there. So if you could just do a once over before everybody leaves and just make sure all of our trash gets picked up and so that we can make sure we're keeping everything nice and clean. We have a fast coming up June 21st through the 23rd, and this is a corporate fast that we do once a quarter. And so I, last week we talked about what fasting was and how that's not an opportunity for you to just kind of twist God's arm into doing something that you want him to do, but rather it's a time for you to get your spirit in line with what his voice is saying to you. And so that when he says something, you know that it's time to do what he says to do, even if it goes against what you really want to do. And that's what fasting is. So I just wanted to give you a couple of tips. Some of you may have never fasted before at all. You may maybe have never even fasted one meal. And so if that's you, but you want to try this, start small. It's okay for you to start small, and you don't have to start out eating no food for three days. This is a three-day fast. But if you want to try to participate in this fast, and you can't go without food, or you've never done it that long before, start with one meal. Just put one meal aside. I assure you that if you never put one meal aside, putting one meal aside will be a sacrifice for you, and it will challenge your flesh. And that's what this is all about. Um, I don't know why the, short, the Lord chose fasting, but he did. So <laughs> that's good enough. And that if he chose that, then that's all the answer we need to do what he's asked us to do. Um, and then just another little tip. If you, if you do want to try to fast this whole time and you find yourself getting a little woozy-headed um, and you just think you can't make it, before you really throw in the towel, you could try a couple of things that maybe you haven't done before. And so if you're trying to fast food the whole three days and you get to day two and you just feel like you're about to pass out, try a smoothie first before you just completely you know, throw in the towel or maybe even a cup of broth or something like that just to kind of take the edge off of your hunger. And that can help you be successful in your fasting and 
we want everybody to be successful in their fasting. So those are just a few tips. Um, again, just to challenge your flesh, challenge your spirit, get you in the right place for whatever the Lord wants us to do. You can do it. You can do it. We can all do hard things. Golden Plus, you have a dinner coming up on June 24th from 4 to 6, and if you're in that group, you know who you need to talk to about that. There's also a crew event coming up on June 24th at noon at the Rubisons. So, the, guys, this is a water war, so this is going to be super fun. Um, Crystal's going to be posting some details about that in the crew chat, so just kind of keep your eye on the crew chat. Um, and come to that. And we have a new event added on June 24th. This is a very popular day, June 24th. So guys, um, you are going to take a little trip to Kansas City. This is really cool, to the National World War I Museum and the Memorial and Cabela's and barbecue, all the guy things. You're gonna check off all the guy boxes. So if you are a guy and you want to go to that, please see Troy Miller or Jeremy Saunders. These two guys are in charge of this trip. Um, Pastor and Scott are both going to be out of town, so please do not come to them for details. Everybody say Troy Miller and Jeremy Saunders, who isn't here, but Jeremy Saunders. Those are who you're going to talk to if you want, if you're a guy and you want to go on the guys' trip. All right, I think that's all I have. Susie's coming for prayer. I think it's really fitting that we have a fast this month because um, we are praying through the scripture of 1 Samuel 3 this month for our prayer focus. And again, if you didn't get one of these little sheets, you're welcome to pick one up in the front. And this has um, our focus that we're praying about all week long. Last week, we were asking the Lord to position us to hear the voice of the Lord. Because if you'll remember in 1 Samuel 3, this is the story of little Samuel when he was a boy, and he was hearing a voice, and he thought it was the voice of the priest, Eli. Um, and then Eli had to give him a little direction. Eli finally realized, this is the voice of the Lord calling you, Samuel. And so um, this week, we are praying that we would be in a submitted place. Do you know that the Lord put structures of authority over us Anybody work? Anybody have a boss? I do. That's an authority. A parent is an authority. A pastor is an authority. We have the government is an authority. We have lots of layers of authority over us. And the Lord put those people in place to help lead and guide and mold us. And we need them. And so we need to listen to the voice of the people that the Lord has put in our lives to help guide us. And so this week, spend a little bit of time in prayer, praying for your authorities. Um, do you know that Eli was not actually doing all the things that he needed to be doing? Some people would say, uh, he was not a very good leader. But do you know he had the word that Samuel needed to be able to hear the voice of the Lord? Without Eli, Samuel would not have been able to figure out what was going on. And so are our leaders perfect? Absolutely not. There is no perfect leader. But we can pray for them and ask the Lord to give them the wisdom that we need so that we can hear the voice of the Lord. And that's what we want to do this month. We're asking the Lord to speak to us individually and to this church. And so we've positioned ourselves to hear the, vo the voice of the Lord. We've stilled ourselves. We've tried to be quiet. And now we're just asking the Lord to wash us and help us know that we are in a submitted place, submitted ultimately to his authority so that we could hear him. This morning, I have a, a few prayer requests for us. I want to pray for little Jasper Collins, who is sick with a really bad stomach flu. Pray for Linda Pruitt, who was in the ER last night dealing with chest pains. Um, remember Clarice's sister, Nancy, who was diagnosed with breast cancer. So we know that the Lord is more than able. And if you're watching online and you have a prayer request, please feel free to put that in the comments. And if you would, let's stand together. We're just going to take these needs to the Lord. If you have something that you want someone to help you pray about, please feel free to come to the front and someone will meet you here to pray. Let's pray together. Lord, I thank you, Jesus 
we are submitted to your authority, Lord, because we know there is no authority like yours. You are all powerful and mighty, Lord, and we look to you for the answer for everything that we need. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that your voice is speaking. Lord, we want to be in tune with what you are doing today, how you are moving, Lord, and the, the work that you are doing. I thank you specifically, Lord, that you would touch Jasper Collins, Lord, touch his little body. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for healing. Thank you, Lord, for touching that family that no one else would be sick. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for your virtue that flows whenever we call upon your name. Lord, you know what Linda Pruitt needs. I thank you for ministering to her body and helping the doctors figure out what's going on in her body. And Lord, you know what Clarice's sister is going through. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for speaking healing and peace to her. Lead and guide her through this process. Lord, we know that you are able to heal miraculously or you are able to lead her through this process. We trust you, Lord. Above all else, Lord, we want you to know that we trust you to lead us the way that we need to be led. Lord, we give you all the glory. We thank you for meeting us in this place today. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. You 
whose love endures through generations. I know that you will keep your covenant. I'm calling on the God of Moses, the one who opened up the ocean. I need your children then you hear your children now you are the same God you are the same God you answered prayers back then and you will answer now you are the same God you are the same God you were provided
won't you fill me again? Won't you fill me again? Fill me up again. Lord, I believe you're still moving. You're the same God. You're still moving, you're still proving yourself to us. He's still moving, he's still proving just how great he is, how great he is. He's still moving, he's still moving, he's still proving, he's still proving. He's still proving. He's still proving. just how great. adopted and taken care of and she's part of her ministry and part of her calling in life is to do this and she was barely able to function and move in her home because of the effects of the thyroid issue significant issues that she was having she had to still work you still have to provide for your family you still have to show up at church faithfully like she did we began to pray Savannah began in the beautiful care of her physicians. Today, this last month, her thyroid is down to 48.7. We serve a God who's still moving. He's the same God. Progressive healing, we're watching it begin to work in Savannah's life. Her energy is up, her strength is up. He's a God of strength. He provides strength in the time that we need it. He's still proving just how great he is, how great. that all these things will be added unto you, TPC, all these things. This last year, Emily Murray made a commitment to the Lord that she would seek first the kingdom, that she would invest in a new and a higher level in her own talents and her own abilities in music and in worship at TPC. She was working three jobs to make ends meet as a 
single mother for her three boys, three jobs as a nurse. She would go from one to one to one to be able to make for hospital, to nursing home, to hospital, to places to make ends meet. She quit all but one and said, Lord, I'm giving my finances to you. You are Jehovah Jireh, my yes. provider. I'm going to trust you that you're the same God that provided manna every single day for the children of Israelites. You're going to provide for me and my boys. This day, today, Emily is making more with one job paying double tithes than she made with all three for years. He's a provider, TPC. He's the same God. He's the same God. There's nothing too hard for him. There's nothing too difficult. We give it to him. We put it in his hands. We trust him. He's and we know in just how great he is. How great he is. He's still moving. He's still moving. He's still proving. that it's been in existence has seen hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miracles of God's faithfulness, of his provision, of his healing. Tim Grimshaw standing right here. Woo! Praise God. July 11th. Yeah. July 11th, two weeks before his 37th birthday, this man, healthy as can be, working hard for his family, suffered a massive stroke. Massive, life-changing, paralyzing, extensive nerve damage throughout his body. Could not function kind of stroke. Woo! Jesus. Ha -ha! He's still moving. He's still proving. Tim is astonishing doctors with his recovery. Is it done? No, God's not finished. But in the process, Tim was filled with the Holy Ghost. He was baptized in Jesus' name. His family's all here. He's serving the Lord. He's doing the best he can. He started his own electrical company since the stroke. He's still moving. He's still proving. God's a provider. He's a healer. He's still moving. He's still proving just how great he is. How great you are. You're still moving, Lord. He's still moving. You're still proving. He's still proving just how great you are. How great you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. TPC, I need you to lift your hands right now. Evidence is all around you. There is no one higher. There is no one greater. There is no one like our God. There is none more able. He is Christ, our Savior, great and glorious. Why don't you begin to lift up your impossibilities to Him right now? Ooh, hallelujah! Oh, there is no one higher, no one greater, no one like our. Grab the hand of someone next to you right now. <laughs> Find somebody next to you to begin to agree with. In Jesus' name. Lord, we speak over impossibilities right now, God. Lord, we speak over cancer. We speak over thyroid issues. 
Lord, we speak over diabetes, God. Lord, we speak over financial challenges and difficulties, Lord. We speak over relationship issues and emotional issues, God. New changes in life, God. Lord, we speak over anxiety and depression, Lord. We speak healing in Jesus' name. Lord, we speak healing in Jesus' name. We speak breakthrough, Lord. Hallelujah, you're able, Jesus. He's still moving. He's still proving just how great he is, how great he is. He's still moving, he's still proving just how great he is, how great he is. He's still moving. Somebody thank the Lord for what he's doing in your life. Thank the Lord for what he's doing in this house. Thank the Lord for what he's doing in somebody else's life. Hallelujah. What an awesome God we serve. I I, I have stories like Jamie has stories, like you have stories. Rose and and, uh, and Brian aren't here today. They've got a sick kid. But I want to testify for them. I want to testify for them. That's the... the, uh, if If you've never lost, if you've never lost a house and not had a place for your family to go, you don't understand the depth of their story. You don't understand the depth of what they've experienced. Five months they spent homeless. Kids with grandma and grandpa. The The prayer was, I need a house. I need need a place for my family. And Rose told me that, she said, we've got a 10-year plan, which you should have a plan. She said, we had no idea what the plan would look like. They had a house here in Moberly, and it was it was meeting needs, but it, it wasn't it wasn't what exactly what they were looking for. They were on uh, a drive through Northern Boone County, and she saw a for rent sign, and she's like, "Just call, just see what it looks like." Today they are in a house, bedrooms for the kids, seven acres, and a lake. She said, that was my 10-year plan, not my today plan. Let me tell you what happened between God, I need something, and a house with a lake. Rose and Brian made a commitment, I need God. I'm going to put God first and see what happens. They were baptized. You saw this happen just a few weeks ago, baptized in Jesus' name. Rose is filled with the Holy Ghost. They're going through a Bible study trying to find as much as they can about God and trying to get themselves squared away in a place that they've never been before. And God said, you know what? I love what you're doing. I'm going to provide for your needs, not because you deserve it, because I'm good. And I'm a good father. I'm a good dad. So Rose and Brian, if you're online, we're celebrating with you today for what God's doing in your life. Thank you, Jesus.
could do testimonies all day long. A lot of good stuff. Stand with me right now. I'm going to preach for a little bit. Sam, it's good to see you today. Happy to see my friend. Love you. Maddie, it's great to have you in the house today. Thanks for joining us today. Gary, where are you, Gary? I see you back there. We're grateful to have you in church with us today. This is Marla Jeffrey's brother. We've been praying that the Lord would help him transition here to Moberly. And we're so thankful that the Lord has met some needs in his life. We're so grateful for what the Lord's doing for Gary. We're trusting the Lord to continue doing that work for you. Provide for your needs. In Jesus' name. Going to Jeremiah chapter 29 today. Very familiar verse of scripture for, for many folks. Verse 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Some of you have this embroidered on a couch cushion. Some of you have this on a framed print in your kitchen. Or maybe you've got it on a post-it note on your rearview mirror. And I want to focus on the last part of that verse, the last three words, an expected end. An expected end. Lord Jesus, I thank you for what you're doing in this house. And Lord, we're so grateful for all the amazing testimonies that we have from you, about you, through us, your blessings in our lives. Lord, you're so good to us. Pray, Lord, that you'd work in this house right now. Let your spirit continue to minister in Jesus' name. Look at your neighbor and say, what's your end? Ask him, what's your end? What's your end? And you may be seated. If you're not familiar with the story that I'm talking about this morning, Jeremiah is a prophet in the Old Testament. He is part of a transition period in Israel's history. Israel is going through a, uh, a time of turmoil and chaos. Jerusalem, their precious city, has been ransacked by the king of Babylon, and they have walked off with the king's family, all the fancy people that are part of his court, and a lot of the craftsmen, the smart people, the workers. Exile is what has happened to the majority of the Israeli population. They are part of a, a global experience that Babylon is trying to comp capture throughout the region. They're taking over everything they can get their hands on, as is those types of cultures desire and want. It's been rough. Exile is no vacation. It comes with a lot of loss and a lot of fear and trauma. There are people who have been abused. There's people who have been put into slavery, people who have lost everything, families, possessions, their homeland. They've become exiles. We have to start way back a ways because the people of Israel have a covenant with God. They've been told by the Lord, if you will do what I ask you to do, if you will connect with me and have a relationship with me, I'll have a relationship with you and I'll bless you. You serve only, my, only me, Deuteronomy 6 and 4. There's no other God but me. He's a jealous God, the word says. And not because he... Uh, is an evil or judgmental or terrible father, but because he simply wants a relationship built on trust. I trust you. I have faith in you. I want you to have faith in me. And unfortunately, the children of Israel over and over and over again turn their back on God, turn their back on the, 
uh, the connection that he has built with them, and they go to serve other gods, completely turning their back on what God has asked them to do. It's a covenant relationship. You do this, I do that. You serve me, you follow me, I will bless you. If you don't, then things go south. This is what's happened with them. It's a final, the, the, the final nail in the coffin, so to speak, for the children of Israel. They have uh, turned their back on the Lord one last time, and he's allowed Babylon to come in and destroy their country, destroy their culture. There are a number of prophets that keep popping up in the Old Testament. If you look at the, the, the books of the Old Testament, you'll see a series of of prophets who tell Israel, if you will just do what God is asking you to do, things will be so much better. At times they listen, but a lot of times they don't. Jeremiah is one of these guys. Jeremiah has stayed behind in the city of Jerusalem. The rest of the exiles are in Babylon. And there are prophets that are saying to them, hey, this isn't going to last very long. Don't worry, you'll go back home soon. Some of you have heard people preach what we call a prosperity gospel. God wants to give you gold-plated toilets. God wants to give you multi-story buildings. God wants to give you the lottery. And that's not scriptural. And these people, these prophets, these false prophets were the original prosperity gospel preachers. Because they were telling these exiles who had been taken from their homeland, you're only going to be here a few years, maybe two at the most. Don't worry about getting settled in. Everything's going to be fine. You're going home soon. God's going to take care of all of your needs and give you everything back. And Jeremiah has a word from the Lord, and he says, nope, it's not going to be like that. You're not going to be there for a couple of years. You're going to be there for 70 because it's been prophesied over and over again. You're going to do some time in exile. And that story would be really difficult to hear if you had just been shipped off. And you would have some confusion as to who should I listen to here? What is the best story for me? And, of course, we always want the good one. We always want the good ending. We want the American story, which ends with the sunset and the girl and the car and all the things wrapped up in a nice, neat bow. Well, this is not that kind of story. Jeremiah says, I'll see you at the end of 70 years, but here's what I want you to do. This is what the Lord's asking of you. And in Jeremiah 29, verse 5, he says, I want you to build houses. I want you to dwell in them. I want you to plant gardens and and take the fruit out of the garden. I want you to take wives and have sons and daughters and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands that they can bear you sons and daughters as well. And I want you to increase there and not be diminished. He's saying to them, settle in for the long haul. Don't just bide your time. But settle in, put down some roots because you're going to be here for a while and I don't want you to come out of this in worse shape than you went into it. Because remember at the beginning he says to Abraham, you're going to populate the earth. You're my people and your seed is going to be as wide as as the sand of the seashore. You're going to populate the earth and everyone's going to be blessed by you. And if you go into exile and you don't continue to live, You will die. And the promise that I gave to Abraham will die with you. Verse 7. And seek the peace of the city where I've caused you to be carried away captive. And pray unto the Lord for it. For in peace therein you will have peace. Does that sound familiar? You need to pray for people who are over the top of you, as we're praying for today, this week. You need to 
Pray for those who have rule over you, authority, so that you can live a peaceable life, the scripture says. Paul, in 1 Timothy chapter 2, says, I want you to be praying. I want you to have supplications. I want to have intercession. Give thanks. And for the king and everybody that's in authority over you, so that you can lead a quiet life in godless, godliness and in reverence. I was asking the Lord this week, as I'm off to do, you should also ask the Lord questions. He'll answer you. Lord, I'm, 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 I'm going to use an old word here. I'm vexed in my spirit. I, I'm, I'm missing something, Lord. I, I'm pointing out all the things that are wrong. I'm listening to the news. Lord, I don't like what's happening here. Lord, I, I don't like what's, in, what's happening in, 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 in my government. I don't like what's happening in my, my, my community. I, I, I got issues, God, and I, I want some answers here. When is this going to end? And his response to me was an expected end. An expected end, and I was just like, oh, I hear where we're going. It's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. Awesome. You think you've reached your lowest point? Not according to the book of Revelation. We got a lot more chaos to go through. Buckle up, buttercup. It's going to get crazy. You, 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 think, you think this is just a, a, a short-term thing? We're in exile, folks. We are in exile. And I brought Jeremiah here today to tell us some truth about where we are and who we are and who we serve. In whom we have our faith today. It might be a while before it gets better. Because if we look at the, the macro level, if you're familiar with macro and microeconomics, you, macro means the big picture, the 30,000 foot view. Our politics are a mess. We're, we've, we've coined the phrase a divided government to describe what's happening in our, our world today, especially in America. Society is turning in on itself and eating itself alive. Our financial picture is haywire and truth is for sale and, 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 and even worse, it's just all made up. You don't have to know truth. You just say something and it is. And it's crazy where we are. That's the big picture. On the micro level where we get really granular, we get real deep into the weeds. You may not had an immediate release for what you were expecting. You, you may get a recovery instead of a miraculous healing. You may have to go through therapy instead of immediately getting up and walking. You may have to work your whole life and then retire instead of getting the mega millions. I mean, God forbid that you would have to put in 70 years as everybody else does. As the scriptures say, Jesus, in the book of Luke, he's talking to his disciples, to those who are around him. Verse nine, in chapter 19, verse 11, he spake a parable to them. He was getting close to Jerusalem. And they thought that the kingdom of heaven was immediately at hand. It was immediately going to show up. They were looking to him not as a spiritual leader, but as a political leader. They were very twisted in what their perspective was of Jesus. And in verse 12, he starts to tell the story. He says, a certain nobleman went to a far country to receive for him a kingdom. And he's going to return. And he calls his ten servants together. He gives them ten pounds. He says, occupy until I come. Occupy until I come. And he goes on to tell the story of, of the, 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 the king, this leader who has gone away, and the servants who've been given responsibility for what he has decide amongst themselves that he's just never coming back. And if he does, well, we'll just take care of everything ourselves. We're going to own everything. And he 
says in the end of this story that these servants were evil because they forgot who gave them their position. They forgot what he asked them to do, which was occupy or keep yourself in play. Do what I've asked you to do. Follow the instructions until I come back. I submit to you today that Jesus has asked us at the macro level to occupy until he comes back. To do what he's asked you to do. And it's pretty simple. He simply asks you to follow him and make disciples and watch for his return. Watch for his return. Make disciples. Hang out with people. Share the gospel. Tell them your testimony. Follow him. Occupy until I come. A lot of other translations in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, go something like this. The King James says, an expected end. A lot of them use the term future and hope to give you a future and a hope. Hope in your final outcome to give you an end and patience, a future filled with hope is a translation from the Hebrew. And that hope that keeps popping up in these translations comes from a, a Hebrew word called watikwa. And the, the, the core, it only shows up in, in a couple of places, that watikwa, that, that phrase. And the core word of this Hebrew, and I'm going to take you to school for just a second, stay with me, is tikva, which means a core. A core. It's the same chord that shows up in Joshua chapter 2. See, Joshua is leading the children of Israel across the Jordan River, out of the wilderness, and into the promised land that God has given to them. And the first place that they come across is a city called Jericho. Jericho is a very fortified city. They send in spies into the, into the, the city to try to figure out what's going on. And they hang out with this lady named Rahab. And the spies are very grateful because she hides them from the soldiers who are looking for them. I'm making a very simple story out of this if you're familiar with it already. And as they get ready to leave, she says, I know your people are coming and they're going to destroy everything. And I want you to save my family, save me, because I've done you a good deed. I've done you a solid, I've given you a favor what can you do for me? And so she has a rope in her house, a tikva. And they say to her, you put this rope outside your window and our soldiers will know whenever they show up to destroy this city as God has commanded us to do, that everybody in this house is safe. You have hope because of this rope. The same cord that God promised in Jeremiah 29 and 11, the same hope that he gave at Jeremiah 29 and 11, an expected end, an expected hope, is the same hope that he provides all the way through the scriptures. All the way through the scriptures, he says, I am your tikva, I am your cord of hope. I am your rope of safety. In Psalms chapter 62, verse 5, it comes up again. The same word shows up. My soul waits silently for God alone. For my expectation, my hope, my tikva is from him. He is my only rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I will not be moved. In God, I have my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength, he is, and my refuge Trust in him, the psalmist says, at all times, you people, pour out your heart before him, for he is a refuge for us. I'm telling you a simple story today, some simple stories, some of them from way back in the day, 
to remind you of where your hope is today. Because in the exile in which we live, because the scripture says, as those who follow after Christ, we are not here to stay. We are just passing through. Our treasures, the old song says, are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. And I want to give you some hope today, child of God. I want to give you some hope today. It might feel like it's going to last forever. You might feel like this is God's never coming back. We've been looking for him for eons, literally thousands of years. People have been saying the Lord is coming. From the Garden of Eden, there has been a promise that a Messiah will come and that he will save his people. That he will renew the relationship that God has with his children. If you feel like that you're at the end of your rope, I want to give you some hope today. Just tie a knot. And hang on. Tie a knot. And hang on. Because it feels like everything is over. It feels like I'm sliding into the abyss and I'm going to lose everything. But your hope is not in this world. Your hope is not here today. Your hope is in the world to come. And your God is playing a very long game. Very long game. He knows who you are. And he's calling to you, put down roots. Have some babies. Plant a garden. Share those vegetables. Marry those babies off and have grandbabies. Just keep watching for me. Because I'm coming back for you. He says at the end of Jeremiah 29, I'm going to give you everything you need. I'm going to provide for all of your needs. I'll bring you back home. You're not going to stay here forever. We're not staying here forever. We have a hope in Jesus. Stand with me tonight. A long game. A long game. We don't know the day nor the hour. The scripture is very clear about that. But we have hope today. We have hope in the Lord. And I want you to tie a knot into wherever you are and hang on because you're going to see Jesus. You're going to see Jesus. And if today you feel like, you know what? I I don't know if I know where I am. You're in the right place. You're in the best place to not be sure about your eternity. Because the scripture says it's easy to connect with God. In Acts chapter 2, Peter is preaching. And they asked him, what are we supposed to do with what you're telling me? And he says, it's easy. Just repent. Just turn your life around. Just just 180 degrees and head the right direction toward the Lord. Repent of your sins. Be baptized in Jesus' name to wash those sins away. And the scripture says, he will fill you. You will be filled with his spirit. Filled to overflowing. What does that look like? What does it feel like? It feels like those ditches out there last night as the water was pouring out of the sky, full to overflowing. Unbelievable amount of water coming through those ditches. And that's the way it feels as the Lord fills your life. I'm just overflowing. Overflowing with his glory. Overflowing with his blessing. Overflowing with his spirit in my life. I open these altars today give you the opportunity right now to speak to the Lord and ask him, Lord, I want more of you. Would you give me more of you? Lord, I know where my life is and I'm and I'm concerned about it. I'm asking questions like Scott today. I, I got questions about this world and what's going on. Lord, I need some peace. I need some hope. Would you be my hope today, Jesus? Would you give me some hope, Lord? 
Lord, I know that I'm not fi- you're not finished in my life. I feel like I'm in exile today, but Lord, I'm, I'm trusting you to be my hope, Lord, right now. Fill me, Lord, with your peace. Fill me, Lord, with your strength. Fill me, Lord, with your spirit right now. I praise you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. Lord, I glorify your name. Lord, there's people in this house that are lifting you up today because we are looking for your return. We're looking for your return, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There's not a mountain too tall. There's not a problem so small that Jesus can't resolve. In time, he'll get involved. I got he cares about. Talk to the Lord right now. It's not a night. Lord, I need you, Jesus. Lord, you see the mountains in my life. A journey too long to end. Lord, I thank you for walking with me, Jesus. Jesus will Lord, see take me you through. through. In time he'll make you new. Yes, you will. Our God, he cares of Lord, I thank you for your care. Pray with somebody right now for somebody next to you. Make eye contact with someone and reach out to somebody and say, hey, I want to just pray with you right now. Ask the Lord to be a I'm blessing to them. You, 
Lord, I'm asking you to touch my neighbor, touch my friend. Lord, touch my spouse right now. Lord, you know what we need in our lives today, Jesus. I'm asking you to minister to us. Lord, I'm asking you to give us hope today. I'm asking you to provide for our needs today, Jesus. I'm asking you to strengthen me, Jesus. Strengthen us together. Lord, I pray that you pour out your spirit in their lives. Lord, you know what they need in their heart today. I pray that you do a work in their lives. Lord, you know what's burdening them. Lord, what, what their heart is concerned about. I pray that you release peace into their heart today. Lord, you know sickness is in this house. Take dominion over it right now and let freedom come to our bodies, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for pouring out hope to us today. Lord, you see those, you see us today. Lord, what we've lost, Lord, I thank you for comforting us. Lord, what we've lost, I thank you for renewing in us. Oh, we love you today, Jesus. I'm gonna wait on you, Lord, Jesus. I love you today. I'm not turning back now. Already oh, we won't turn back from you, Jesus. We won't turn back from you, Lord. We're we'll following you, Jesus. We're we'll following you, Jesus. I'm gonna wait on you, Jesus. I'm gonna wait on you, Jesus. I'm gonna wait. Turn it back now. I'm not turning back now. I'm not turning back now. I'm gonna wait on you, Jesus. 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 Cause I'm not. All right, let me let me talk to you real quick. I, I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do this, but I feel like the Lord wants me to do this. I got four of these. There's somebody that doesn't, I'm going to call you out. You need some hope today. You feel like that you're sliding off the edge of your rope today. And I want you to know that the Lord's tied a knot for you to hold on to. I got four of these. I've had these in my rope bucket for years. Not knowing what they, they look just like this. I don't even know where they came from. But just like this. And I was putting this together, and last night in the middle of the night, I was like, that rope bucket, I gotta bring those ropes to church. So who needs a, 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 a physical manifestation of the hope that God has for your life? Come take it. Come take it. John, John you got John, your hand in the air? I see you right there, bro. Jesus' name. Hold on to that rope right there, John. You're holding on to the edge, but the Lord's tied you a knot on the end of it. And he's not done with what he's doing with John Payne. He's not done with the Morgan's family. He's not done with the Morgan family. I got one more. Who needs... Who needs one more? Right here. Let me, let me tie a knot in the bottom. You, you tie that knot in the bottom of that. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing for Becky. Lord, for her family right now. Lord, we got hope in what you are doing. Lord, there's nothing in the rope, but it's everything in you. Lord, there's everything in you. There's everything in you, Jesus. We're not giving up hope. Because we know in whom we have believed. Gary's sitting right here because he knows in whom he has believed. The Lord provided for some needs today. Ed, you got stories that go for pages of what God has done in your life. Tim, I love your story. I'm so thankful for what God has done. This Tim, I love what God's done in your life. There's so many knots at the end of people's rope. The only hope I have is Jesus. Lord Jesus, I thank you for what you've done in this house. Such a wonderful God. Such a wonderful God. 
Such a wonderful God you are to us, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for hearing us. Lord, Lord, we're expressing some gratitude right now. We're expressing some gratitude to you, Jesus, for what you've done in our lives. Lord, the hope that you've given to us, Jesus. Lord, we got some tears because of what you've done. We're so thankful. So grateful, Lord, for your provision, your hope in our lives, Jesus. I thank you for the cord of life, Lord, that you have put into us, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for going with us right now. Lord, I thank you for going with us and letting us see your hand at work. Lord, let us see your love and your compassion at work in our community, in our lives. Lord, we're not turning back from you. We're trusting you, Jesus. Lord, we love you today. We love you today, Jesus. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Look at your neighbor. Tell him, I know what my end is. I know what my end is. Tim, I know what my end is. Ask him, do you know what your expected end is? Where's your hope today? My hope's in Jesus. Thank you for being in church today. There's still some people praying here. If you need to leave, please feel free to do so. So glad you are all in the house of the Lord today. Go with the Lord and be blessed. Have faith in him today. In Jesus' name.